Well, good morning. Welcome to our devotional thought uh, from Greater Grace Church in uh, Baltimore. I'm Pastor Steve Andrelonis, and I have uh, the message for the morning for you. And uh, it's great uh, to be with you here on this Tuesday. And uh, I think we're all counting down the days. Uh, this has been an interesting year. And we're thinking about maybe uh, what's happened, uh, what's happened uh, throughout the year. And uh, we're thinking about what's coming, what's going to come uh, in the next year, 2021. So maybe we're doing that more than usual this year. Uh, but um, I have a, a thought for you from uh, reading through the book of Chronicles, as I have been in my personal Bible reading. And uh, it's an interesting uh, book in that it says a lot of the same things, tells a lot of the same stories that we read in uh, First and Second Kings. And at the beginning of First Chronicles, there's another book, uh, Second Chronicles, uh, we are seeing uh, these stories uh, in another light. I think when we read the book of Kings, we see those two books, they're really focusing on the throne, the throne of Israel, as it was occupied uh, by the person of David and then his son, Solomon. And so we see a progression. First and second Samuel set up the way the throne was instituted in Israel. And then we get David on the throne after Saul's failure as a king. And then we get the succession of what goes on among the kings of Judah and Israel, because there is a division that happens after the death of Solomon. And that's a, a long uh, story and a long, long explanation, not suitable for a short devotional like this. But I think it's uh, interesting to look at the passages here and see uh, the way Chronicles gives us the information. Now, from what I understand from church history and from Bible history, the book of Chronicles was written after Israel had endured the Babylonian captivity. And if you're reading Kings, there's a lot of palace intrigue, who's on the throne, who's, uh, who's angling for the place of power. And uh, it's really uh, centered on the king and his activity, the kings and their activities, the battles they won, the things that they did, the failures, the triumphs. But in Chronicles, we are getting like, instead of a top-down look at things, we are really getting a bottom-up look at things. And Chronicles is written uh, from the temple viewpoint from the people who worked inside the temple. So the Kings, the Book of Kings, really gives us the idea of the governmental throne. But here in the Book of Chronicles, I think we're looking, the primary emphasis is what's going on around the Ark of God, the mercy seat, the throne of grace. And so just the very first word of First Chronicles tells us something. The very first word is Adam, and we go through a genealogy. We're led through uh, to Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Judah, also Levi, and then David. And uh, that's how the temple is talking about the progression that led to the throne of Israel. And then uh, we get a lot of details about what goes on in the temple. And uh, I, I, a couple of words struck me when I was reading uh, in uh, First Chronicles 9, I believe it is. There is utensils and spices and bread and oil and wine, all these like little elements of what was going on in the temple, all these little things. And there's a, a man, his name, Mattathiah, Mattathiah, it says that he was entrusted with the breaking, uh, with the baking rather, the baking of the bread that was set before the Lord on the table of presence every Sabbath day. And so these little details about the people and uh, their genealogies, the members of the tribes and the ones who were working in the temple, this seems to be 
the focus of the priests and the ones who are looking at life from near the ark of God, from near the mercy seat and looking out instead of uh, seeing what's at the throne of Israel and looking down. And I think it's interesting if you go to Luke 3, we go backwards. We go Adam uh, in Chronicles, we get Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, all the way down to David. When we go to uh, the line of Jesus as presented in Luke 3, it works its way backwards from Jesus all the way back to Adam. You can read it at the end of Luke chapter 3. But, I, you know, in the Chronicles, uh, we get a sense of God being concerned about every person, every one, and every detail related uh, to his worship. And I think Adam is interesting for us because we could look at it this way. Uh, we know Adam was formed, and we know that he was made in the image of God, and we know that he was animated, that is, made alive. How? By the breath of God being breathed into him. And so that's an interesting picture. Like, Adam, what was the first, like, temple of God? What was it? I think it might be, it might be in my mind, it might be that this person Adam, who was made in the image of God and made alive by the breath of God, was really the first place where God put something of himself in something made of clay, something made of the dust of the earth. And so we read about Moses' tabernacle in the wilderness, and then we get to this passage uh, in Chronicle, these passages in Chronicle about what the temple should be. Now, the temple that Solomon built had been destroyed. And the Chronicles is being written at a time when Israel is trying to repopulate Jerusalem and reinstitute its place of worship and the practices of worship. And we get a great group of stories there about the gatekeepers and about the singers and about the people who counted the utensils, even down to the furniture movers. And I think this, you know, we can get lost in some of these uh, little details of all the names and all the things and all the tasks that are that are uh, expressed to us in each of these uh, chapters. Uh, but let's not get lost in that because I think it says something about the care of God for us, for each of us, for every one of us. His thoughts toward us are like the thoughts, are like the sand of the sea. Every moment he's thinking about every one of us. And he desires, in Second Peter, God has a promise, and his desire is that everyone, everyone would turn to him and see the reality of who made them and see the redemptive plan in the Christ who gave his life on the cross. That's like, that's like such a story. And so a, a little name like Mattathiah, he was entrusted to break the bread. He was the firstborn of Shalom. And uh, he was a firstborn and he was entrusted to break the bread. And uh, that's like such an important detail that God put it in here. And that's, that comes before we even read about the anointing of David as the king in Chronicles. And then even uh, chapter 12, which is one of my favorite chapters in First Chronicles, it lists all these warriors, including uh, men of Issachar, who were really significant in that they knew the times, they understood what was going on in Israel and they knew what to do. And they, these people were drawn to David who became their king. He, they were drawn to David as their king because they understood David's consideration for what? The ark of God. You can read it in the other chapters there. David concerned, concerned himself with being in the presence of God, singing before the Lord, and having the ark of God be the center of the world in Israel, the center of life in Israel. David was committed to that. And that's what it means when it says that David had a heart after God. David had a heart after God for the presence and his glory. And that's why David drew men, warriors, warriors from all of the tribes 
attach themselves to David. Why? Because he understood the significance of the temple and the throne of grace that was above his throne. There may be, I think if you read through the kings, there was no other king who understood this after David, not even Solomon and all that he did and all that he built, the glorious structure that he constructed was so uh, understanding of what the ark of God, the presence of the Lord, the center of life should be. And that's the way I think application for us, like we can think that maybe we do very small things, but we are doing very small things in the name of the great God, the only God, the one and only Lord of all creation, the King of Kings, it's him, it's him who we serve. So if our life is about the presence of the Lord, if it's about the ark of God, if we can dance and leap and sing in the presence of the Lord with no inhibition as David did, then that says something. We have understood that we are made in his image and that we are created for a purpose and that we are full of who he is, the breath of life and the filling of the Holy Spirit. So that's the way we should look at things, I believe. That's the way we should go forward on this day. Thanks for watching. God, we just ask you to bless and keep everyone uh, throughout the world. Give us a great sense of your presence. Give us a commitment uh, to uh, having you be uh, the fullness of who we are. Let us listen to you. We are not insignificant. We are made to bear your image and to reveal your glory. Amen.